What's up, guys? We are live at South by Southwest with Warren G and Carmgill. Great to see you guys. We got a nice couch for you guys. We know you like the West Coast laid back style. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we got you a couch to chill out on. How are you guys doing? We're good, you know, excited. Good, just like uh, excited, just ready to, you know, let a lot, a lot more people see uh, G Funk, the, the movie, and, you know, just get, just. You know, have fun. Shit. You know, I don't want. I don't want to cuss. I know. You can cuss. You can cuss. We're on Facebook, so you can cuss. Oh, well, and I want to remind your family. I got the producer behind me going, no, no. I'm like, yes, encourage swearing. <laughs> so the movie, you guys, documentary. Um, it's called G Funk. Last night, standing ovation for these guys. We were there. It was insane. The Thank response. You. We want you guys to also write in your questions for these guys. Don't. Don't be shy, write them in if you've got anything to ask these guys. But what was your reaction when people stood up last night? You guys were there, you watched mm -hmm. the whole thing and you watched the crowd response. Mm -hmm. Was that the first time you've seen a crowd? You watched it with a crowd and, and how did that feel? Um, it was incredible, you know, I was telling um, someone, uh, it's, a lot of the time you don't realize certain parts are funny because you're so into like making a movie. <laughs> and then, you know, it's hilarious. People were just laughing at like all the Dion parts. And it was just a cool feeling to, to see yes, that. Yes, prime time. Dion Sanders was in this film. And he, first of all, he brought the wardrobe too. Yeah. <laughs> there was like a wardrobe off going on between everybody. Everybody brought yeah. this out. But for you, mm -hmm. you seemed to get emotional in the Q&A last night. I don't know if I was just reading that, but you seemed emotional. You seemed really touched and moved by the response. Um, no, I, mean, no, I, I wasn't uh, emotional. I was just, just happy um, that, you know, everybody really, really appreciated, uh, you know, the work that me and Carm put together. And just to, like, like you said, the standing ovation was, was, was incredible, and it made us feel real good about what we did. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really good. It's great, you know, and it, it felt good. How does nobody know this story yet? How does nobody really know, like, your story? Warren's so humble. That's what it is. He's just low-key. Too low-key. Um, I mean, it took a while, you know. Um, it, it's, it's there, you know, but people really don't know what it, what it is. Um, you know, it, I just had to find, you know, the right person to you know, lay out the blueprint that I had in my head uh, out the right way on, on, on film and Carm understood and uh, how to lay it out and, and, and you know, the, my other guys as producers with me, uh, they seen the vision too, so it, it, it all worked out. So yeah. you say you find the right guy, you find a guy that was born in 96. 94. 94, sorry, <laughs> after, after, <laughs> he's like, no, I'm two years old, yeah, after, sorry. This sort of movement sort of started the G Funk and and so how did you how were you the right person for it and, and tell me a little bit about you know your your sort of upbringing. Um, my parents always you know played like all that music Earth Wind and Fire I was, like the soulful music of the 60s 70s 80s and when I met Warren um, whenever we were on tour like he didn't really listen to rap like everything he was playing in the tour bus was that era of music and. It was just incredible, and then you know, Warren pretty much told you we laid it out and met all these you know our incredible team of producers who made this happen right away, and it was just a crazy. Project. So there's so many great one-liners. Everybody who's interviewed, I don't know as a director, you probably had to cut out so much great stuff because there was oh, there was so many. One of my favorite <laughs> lines was Snoop saying that when he went to Europe and like toured with you, mm -hmm. he called you, I'm gonna, can I swear? No, I can't. I'll say <laughs> bleepin' Elvis. You were like yeah. bleepin' Elvis there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then he sort of, he talked about how like you were always a great promoter of him. He said you were like the Don King of promoters yeah. in the music business. How did you, did you know he said that about you before seeing this or? I, I didn't know that. I didn't, we, we got interviewed uh, in different, Area. I, I didn't go, I was at none of the interviews. Everybody who did their interview, that was straight from the heart from them just being with the, with the camera crew. But um, as far as me promoting Snoop back then, I just wanted to see him win, you know? And, um, and you know, cause like he, like he was saying, if, if he win, we win, you know? So that's what it was, we was two, one, three. And, and I was just happy to, and working hard just to see him get to where he wanted to get because he, he was so talented and, and I didn't want to, 
see that talent go to waste. So I, I, went, I worked hard to, to get him, you know, in the game. Well, he, there's a story in the, in the film about how he yeah. at one point threw his rhymes in the trash. He yeah. was really frustrated with getting his music out there. Right. You fished them out of the trash? I took them right out the trash and told them, we can't, you know, we, you can't do this. You know, uh, gotta, gotta keep working hard and, and just don't give up, you know. And uh, shit, that's all we had. You know, back then, you know, he was rapping, I was doing what I was doing. I was rapping, DJing, but that's all we had, so I couldn't let him give up because we, this is what we, we stopped doing a lot of stuff, a lot of things that we wasn't supposed to be doing, but we stopped a lot of that just to sacrifice and just let all that shit go, and if we had to be broke, we was gonna be broke, but we just, you know, I didn't want, I didn't want that to, to get us back into a situation where we ended up going to jail or getting shot or something like that. So we just went, we just went and just said, forget everything and got jobs and, uh, and kept working on what we wanted to do and it finally paid off. So in that moment when the guys went off, were assigned to death row mm -hmm. and you went back mm -hmm. and you started, you know, really G5, you really started right. your sound. How did you not get defeated and not fall back and not, because you were sort of there doing your own thing on your own? Um, I just, you know, whatever, whatever, whenever I encounter anything that's, that's negative towards me, it just make me work harder to, to you know, get past it and, and do something, you know, be on a more positive, you know, road. Um, not saying that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't Snoop or Dre or, or none of them or nothing like that, 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 that gave, that had that negative. It wasn't them, it was other, entities outside of that and around that was causing that, which made that situation happen. So, I mean, it's all good. It just made me work hard. And uh, um, I'm still like that, you know, um, like a lot of the, the new music today um, and, and producers, because I'm a producer and an artist. Uh, when I hear a dope beat, it makes me go in the studio and work hard because I'm like, that's so dope, I gotta make something dope. So when you talk about the music of today, and maybe you can speak to this, Snoop did say there wouldn't be a Jay-Z, there wouldn't be a lot of the current artists if it wasn't for the sound that you created. Yeah, uh, Russell said that. <laughs> was that Russell? That, that was, yeah, yeah uh, Russell Simmons that said that, and it, you know, it, it was a trip. Um, that, you know, just him saying that, uh, you know, tripped me out, you know, but it's real. You know, and uh, it's all good. You know, that's a very successful artist right now. He's on top of the game. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I was able to assist with, with uh, you know, him being able to be supported by a record company. So I want to play a quick game with you guys. It's going to be an either or situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to throw a little 90s, you know, culture in there for you. You guys ready? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so. Long Beach or Cabo? Uh, I'm gonna have to say, I'm sorry, when I gotta say Cabo. <laughs> <laughs> nah. hey, hey, I'm LBC to the heart, baby. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. LA Backyard Barbecue or Texas Barbecue? Ooh, I mean, I had Franklin's Texas Barbecue <laughs> yesterday, so I gotta say Texas Barbecue. I'm gonna say LA Backyard <laughs> Barbecue because I barbecue and this is Sniffing Griffin's food. <laughs> That's my I, slogan, Sniffing I, Griffins, fool. I, I barbecue, I'm a pit master. I see this. I, oh my gosh, not just the regular Check out my Instagram. Pit master too. Okay, pool party or Vegas VIP room? Oh, pool party for sure. Uh, Vegas VIP room. Wow. I'm surprised at that That's one. where the money at. <laughs> okay. okay, business first, business yeah. first. Slideshow? Or IMAX 3D movie? Ooh, IMAX 3D movie. IMAX 3D movie. <laughs> yes. Okay, we're going 2017. Okay. okay, 310 or 213? Oh, that's an easy one. 310, I'm kidding. 213, of course. <laughs> hey, I didn't even need to ask 213. It. <laughs> it's 213 because 213 was the entire area code from LA to, to San Fernando Valley. Uh, it was the whole South Southland at one point, so I'm riding with two one three. 
Got it. Okay, now 212, New York City, or 305, Miami? I love New York, so 212. It's a lot of beautiful women in Miami, man. <laughs> Jeez. But I got to ride with the NYC. <laughs> New York, baby. Okay, we have a question from one of your fans. Melissa wants to know, who are the other rappers you're currently listening to? For me? I think it's for, for well, one. You can answer it's it, for too. One. <laughs> um, I listen to, uh, uh, I like uh, Drake, uh, 2 Chainz, uh, Young Dolph, uh, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole. Uh, it's this new cat out. Uh, I think his name is... Is it called Black or Six Lack or, or something like that? It, it got a song called Problems. I really like him. Um, I like uh, T Grizzly, uh, new, the, another new cat. Uh, man, Chuck Taylor, who was an up and coming artist out of Long Beach, he's dope. Uh, Mike Slice, another cat out of Orange County, that's dope. But, you know, just a bunch of bunch of young cats. And non rappers. Non rappers. So what you mean, R&B guys? Any other girl? music genre, country, oh, 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 whatever, uh, uh, whatever you, <laughs> we're in Texas. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Jesus. Adele. I nice. like Adele. <laughs> she, she's dope. Um, let me see. I mean, it's a, a lot of the R&B artists is uh, uh, rapping, so it's kind of hard to, 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 you know, they everybody doing the same thing. Uh, let me see, Adele. Uh, What's your favorite Adele song? I'm dying to know. Oh my God. <laughs> I love them all. Can you sing any of them? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing, baby. I only gangster walk. <laughs> if, no. you could, if you could freestyle any of her songs, that would, I think, make my life. <laughs> uh, it would make my life. It would make everybody's <laughs> life behind here. I can dig it. What, is it like for, uh, what was it like for you hanging out with these guys? And I mean, it just must be a whole incredible world to sort of see sort of the behind the scenes, what goes... There, like I said, oh, yeah. there must be so much stuff on the cutting room floor. It was crazy. I have one story in particular that's kind of funny. Um, after we wrapped the Snoop interview... He, uh, he comes up to me and he goes, hey, do you, uh, do you smoke? And I was like, uh, I mean, sure. <laughs> and I ended up sitting down with him in the studio for like 45 minutes and just hanging out and being with Warren and on the road. And this has been an incredible, incredible project. <laughs> I will say I interviewed him once and he asked me the same question after the interview. And he's like, do you smoke? And he blew it in my face and he goes, you do now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I have to wrap things up, but I just have one more question. Mm. Beginning of the film, you, Nate, and Snoop, you were mm. candy salesmen as kids. You yeah. went around door to door. The Voltron crew. Who was the best candy salesman of the three of you? Uh, wow. Uh, I'd, I'd say Snoop. Snoop was was the uh, was the man. He was, you know, he's a little charming guy. <laughs> Hi, man. My name is Snoop, and you know, he's real. You know, he was real. So he, he got me on that one. Uh, let me see. But see, we had another guy named uh, Red, Antonio Red, that was really good. He was killing everybody. And, uh, but that whole, that whole uh, reenactment right there was, that was this DJ. You know, when I say the Voltron yeah. crew, that's the Voltron wow. crew that was uh, in, in this, that I talked about in this DJ. So that, that, that was... Uh, that was cool. Your candy crew. Yes, you did. <laughs> you guys, this is a pleasure. The movie is incredible. Thank you. It's G Funk. Can't yeah. wait for it to be sold and out there. And Thanks. it was phenomenal. Yes, you did. For sure. Great job. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. <laughs> no, thank you for having me. Thanks. <laughs>